Welcome to Calculus. This is going to basically be a set of review lessons first, and we're essentially going to be reviewing the essential concepts from pre-calculus that are going to be helping us. The first, we're going to examine functions. And so today, we're going to be able to determine a function visually and analytically, and evaluate functions. Now the first section, we'll talk about functions and its different notation functions and its notation will be seen all across calculus. I mean you're going to be using that fun function notation a lot. Now there are many ways for us to define a function and we'll begin by defining a function as a special kind of relation. Now a relation is in which each x coordinate is matched with only one y coordinate is said to be described as y is a function of x. So a relation basically is your mapping an x value to a y value. We see these in different forms, like if I said 2, 3, that's the point 2, 3. This x value is paired with this y value. One is mapped to the other. And it doesn't have to be numbers or x's and y's, it literally could be anything. You could, you know, in one column have age and you can map age to height. And you can look at the relationship between age and height. And that's the why we call it a relation is because we're examining a relationship between two values. Now there are going to be three basic ways to determine if a relation is a function, numerically, graphically, and analytically. So the first, let's examine the numerical way of examining if something is a function. So if something is going to be a function, if a relation is going to be a function, basically we can only have one x value mapping to one y value meaning we cannot have one x value mapping to two y values. So if I have one x value mapping to two y values, that's not a function. Now looking at this, negative one maps to five, negative one maps to zero. Because my negative one matches or maps to those two different y values, it's not gonna be a function. Next example, if I look at these three points here, 2 is mapping to 5, 2 is mapping to 7, it is not a function, and the reason being is because 2 is mapping to two different outputs. Now looking at these, which of the following relations describes y as a function of x? Well, if I look at these points here, negative 2, 1, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, look at that. 1 is mapping to two different y values, so this right here is not a function. But over here though, negative 2, 1, 2, and 3, okay, those aren't mapping to different, they all have different y values that they're mapping to, and so just visually looking at the points, we can say that those are going to be functions. Now we can kind of take this to another level, and I'm going to give you a theorem. It's called the vertical line test. Now this theorem basically states that a set of points in the plane represents y as a function of x, if and only if no two points lie in the same vertical line which means if I draw a vertical line and it only crosses a point once, it's a function. But if I can find an example in which I can draw a vertical line and it crosses the points more than once, it is not a function. And so comparing it, that first example here that we saw, this is not, it doesn't pass the vertical line test, right? It crosses two points here. But on this instance, it does pass the vertical line test because it only crosses a point once when you draw them. So let's do this again. Let's use the vertical line test to determine which of the following relations describe y as a function of x. Well, if I do the vertical line test here, it fails. Therefore, it's not a function. Now, just remember, this notation here means therefore. And if I look at this one, if I do my vertical line test, it passes. Therefore, I can conclude that it is a function. Now, the last one, Analytically, how do we represent to see is this going to be a function? Well, what we need to do is we need to get y by itself. And once we get y by itself, if basically there's no plus or minus in the equation on the other side, then it doesn't represent a function. So if there's a plus or minus, it doesn't represent a function. And the reason being is because what's going to end up happening is whatever value for x that I pick, there's a positive version and a negative version that it's going to map to the y. So that's why we have to be kind of careful of it. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get y by itself. So I have y's on both sides, so maybe add 
the 3y to both sides here. So then I get x squared y plus 3y equals 1. Now on both sides here, I can't combine the x squared and the y and the 3y together because they're different terms. But I can group them together. There is a y in common with each other. And so I can factor out that y. And so if I factor out that y, I get x squared plus 3, and that's going to equal 1. And then divide both sides by x squared plus 3. I get y equals 1 over x squared plus 3. y is by itself. There's no plus or minus. Therefore, it's a function. Now this graph is probably going to be something that looks really goofy, but it is definitely a function. This next one here, i got to get y by itself. So I can first subtract the x squared on both sides. So I get negative y squared equals 1 minus x squared. I can divide everything by a negative. So that became a positive. That's a negative and negative. So that became a positive, and positive 1 and negative becomes a minus 1. Now to get y by itself, I need a square root. Now if you remember, when we square root something, that's an even root. If we take an even root to the both sides, there has to be a plus or minus. So now if there's a plus or minus, it's not a function. So therefore, in this case, it's not a function. Now we're going to kind of take a look at how we can take these functions and how they kind of intertwine with each other. So since the outputs, um, they're basically determined by the input x, we can kind of symbolize it in this special no, uh, function notation. So if I use this phrasing, f of x, we say it as f of x. Now the y value of the y is completely dependent on the choice of x. So the only way you can get your y value is based upon the choice that you choose for x. Meaning that if I say f of 2, that's going to yield my y value. I chose 2 for my x, so therefore it's going to yield me my y value. And that's kind of like where we need to kind of think about it. Now x, we call that the independent variable. Why? Because it just exists. We choose it. We select it. The only way we get the y is by first selecting the x. Now we're going to kind of see this notation here and with this notation we're going to be able to do different things. So for example this is saying add f and g together. So it says my f function plus my g function and then here's my input meaning you need to plug in negative 1. So we're going to add the two together and then plug in negative 1. Now another way of thinking about it is it's saying if I have f plus g of x that's the same as saying f of x plus g of x. I'm just taking the two functions and adding them together. Or I can look at it as f of negative 1 plus g of negative 1. Right? Just depending how I do it. If you want to even follow the logic further, right? I took this, broke that up into f of x plus g of x. Well, then from here, because it says negative 1 right here, I plugged in a negative 1 in for x here, and I plugged in a negative 1 in for x here. Then from there, my f of negative 1, well, my f of negative 1, I plug in negative 1 into this function here, and that's what I did here. I plug in negative 1 into this function here, which is my g of x, which is here. Now if I simplify those, I get 8 and 4. So f of negative 1 we said was 8, f g of negative 1 we said is 4, 8 plus 4 gives me my 12. My next one here, this one says g minus f of x and then find g minus f of 2. Okay, So first finding the g minus f of x, remember we can say that that's g of x minus f of x. So it's the g function minus my f function. So let's combine those together. So here's my g function, 3 minus x over 1, or 1 over x, minus, there's my f function, 6x squared minus 2x. So I would combine them together. There we go. Uh, I was able to take this negative and I distributed it to both of these, and so I got negative 6x squared and plus 2x. And now I just wrote them in order. Okay, so I just wrote it in order there. Now sometimes, because we have this negative 6x squared plus 2x plus 3 and then minus uh, 1 over x, I can go ahead and just take right now 
I can just take this two and I can plug it in. Boop, 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 just take it and plug it in. But then if you notice, I'm gonna be left with like that fraction, right? So one thing that I can do to kind of make it a little bit easier, maybe if I don't wanna deal with that fraction right now, I mean, you can just enter in your calculator and you know that will find you an answer. But sometimes when it's in this basic algebraic form, maybe combine everything together. Find the common denominator between everything. So since x has, there's an x in the denominator here, well, this needs an x in the denominator, this needs an x in the denominator, and this needs an x in the denominator. So I multiply everything by x over x. So doing so, now I have an x in the denominator on everything. This becomes negative 6x cubed. x and x gives me x squared. 3x and minus 1, all of that's over x. And then uh, just combining it together, basically, since they all have the same denominator now, I can make this statement here. And so now on top here, right, I have my function, and then from there, I can go ahead and take my g minus, or the two, and I can plug it into my function in for x. And once again, use your calculator. But like I said, just because we were just finding this, you know, this two here, didn't necessarily have to do it, but I just wanted to show you, and it's a nice refresher. Let's look at f of x plus one. Now this is where things get a little bit more abstract. They do, they get a little bit more abstract here because what this is telling me to do is take my f function and plug in this input of x plus one. Normally we're used to just plug in an a number, but this is an abstract value, x plus one. So remember I said that when we go through this, imagine that there's a parenthesis. It's almost like a placeholder for my input. And this right here is telling me what I need to plug in. And it's telling me I need to plug in that x plus one. And I'm gonna be plugging in that x plus one into x up there. And so doing so, I'm gonna get six times x plus one squared minus two times x plus one. And now I can you know, foil this, right? This is foil, that's x plus one times x plus one. And so I'm gonna get six times x plus one times x plus one minus two x minus two. So foiling this, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1. And then I'm going to get 6x squared plus 12x plus 6. Add that, add those together. So I'm going to get 6x squared plus 12x. And then minus 2x plus 6 minus 2. And so combining those together, that's going to be f of x plus 1. So in closing here, what concepts were reviewed today? Well, we took, at func took a look at function notation and the different forms to determine if a relation is a function. Now I want some feedback here. So in your own words, how do you know if the relation is a function? And what about the y equals plus or minus? What about that makes the expression not a function? Like I want to hear in your own words, why does that not make it a function? If you guys do have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.